All right, we're good. I can record it. All right, it's uh, seven oh seven. We'll get started, and then if JP comes in, we'll just uh, fill him in on what's going on. Uh, seeing that I don't have anybody else from the public on, um, I'm just going to do the first part of the script, just confirming that our members are here. So, uh, okay, 707, uh, good evening and welcome to the May 26th posted meeting of the Historic District Commission. As a preliminary matter, this is Mark Aquino, Chair of the Midland Historic District Commission. Permit me to confirm that all members and persons anticipated on the agenda are present and can hear me. Deborah Flanagan? Yeah. Jane Lowell? Yes. Janice Muldoon Moores? Ruth O'Grady? Ruth, are you okay? Oh, oh. Can you hear me? Okay. Wait a minute, yeah. There you go. <laughs> All right. And Dan Baya. Yep. Okay. All right. That's good enough. There's three more pages we won't get into. All right. Let's jump right into the agenda. Uh, since JP's not here, I'm going to skip over the uh, meeting minutes. And why don't we delve right into the uh, current projects that are either getting ready to progress or in progress at this time. Uh, so let's start with 7 Main Street. Dan, I'll let you start since you were the first contact on this. Yeah, which, hang on. Which one is 7 Main is the church, right? Church, correct. So we got a permit came through to replace the roof on the Baptist church. Um, Unfortunately, before we had a chance to talk about it, it was they basically pushed it through and overrode it as an emergency. That I guess the roof has been leaking. It was a whatever. It is what it is. They're replacing the roof with an identical roof. I think he's changing the color from gray to black, so it's not anything crazy. But I think related to all these, I think we may need to have a discussion on how we want to handle these. I question as to how, I mean, they applied for their thing on April 28th and none of our thing really came up until May 11th. So if it was such an emergency, why did they sit on it for two weeks? But what do I know? Um, but I think definitely we need to do some outreach. I think people aren't aware of the district. And I don't recall who I told, but I have now set it up in viewpoint. So any permit within the district when you're applying for the permit, it now pops up a big thing and says, warning, you're in the district. You need to, you might have to do all this stuff. So hopefully we head some of this off so it's not a surprise. Okay. But I guess, I mean, I think, I think the work's been done. It was, they were up there the other day. It's done. Okay. The roof is done. Looks fine. So they did a good job. A little risky uh, for my, <laughs> up there with no harnesses or anything, just went up and down that roof, but it's done. Um, I, I know they had an issue with uh, having a dumpster. Uh, they never had a dumpster there, so I don't know what they did with everything. But the company, well, yeah, I, I wonder. The company they were going to use apparently wasn't licensed in Menden. Okay. I bet money they loaded everything in a trailer and hauled it to a third-party site where they put it in the dumpster they were going to use. Most okay. likely, because there yeah. was never a dumpster there. Interesting. That's Missy trying. They're trying to catch up on all this permitting and. Technically, if you use a dumpster, it's supposed to be permitted in the town of Menden so they can get their hundred bucks. <laughs> okay. I don't know. Yeah. Anyone else uh, want to say anything about the uh, project at 7 Main Street? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, I never even saw it. I'm sorry? I never even saw that it was done or worked on. Yeah. They I, were I've, there. Got get, I've got to get out more. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they were there for about a week. They took the weekend off. Oh, my gosh. Really? <laughs> they worked uh, until uh, about 9 o'clock each night. Wow. wow. But, uh, they got it done. All right. Uh, 9 Main Street. Which one is 9? The one next door to me. When we talked about when you guys came out. Right. So nine is that brown wooden, like dilapidated house. Yeah, creation's old house. And I think the issue here is not that there's any pending permits. It's that nobody seems to really know what's going on. This guy bought it. He's sitting on it. He apparently tried to do work at another house on Millville Street and got stopped because he had no permits. 
but okay. it's a, technically a historic house. And I, I know I've talked to Kathy Schofield a little. I just wonder if we might be wanting to send a letter, you know, maybe even offering to help. I don't know. I, I just, I don't know. Is it, em is it empty? Yes. Yeah. Oh, that one. It yeah. used to be, <laughs> Blue used to live there. Really? Yeah. Okay. That was his house and there have been obviously ad adaptations, but um, it would be nice if it could be saved. It's yeah. been vacant for a while, right? It has, it's going because, on at least a couple um, of years now. Yeah. Not couldn't, more. couldn't afford it, really. Yeah. The woman who inherited it could not afford it. Okay. Um, so I guess she sold it and that's all I know. <laughs> I, I know that it was in rough shape. And that definitely an investor took it, but. So is this a case of demolition by neglect? Well, yes, it is. I'm afraid it's going to happen because the, uh, all the windows are open. Uh, and the only thing that they've done to it over the last month is they basically clear cut the back. Uh, they cut down as many trees as they could have, um, which it really needed. And they cleaned up most of it. They did a nice job doing that. Uh, one of the things that we ran across with the town is there is a second parcel there, 9-1, uh, which the town owns and took uh, for taxes in 2016. Hmm. Uh, so I don't believe he's aware of that because he was doing work in that small parcel. Um, so uh, I don't know if the town is reaching out to him about that, but as, a, as the Historic District Commission, it would be my recommendation that we send a letter to him just letting him know that he is in the historic edition and there's anything we can do to help out at least he knows we're here and well the other thing too is if the windows are open um we could get tim icardi to have him board them up because that's happened before in other homes uh mm -hmm. that happened with norman cox's house and um, um it had to be boarded up so people could not get in there because I of the liability yeah well, not only that, it's going to speed the, the um, disintegration of the house. Of course. I right. mean, I'm sure at this point. So if he's going, is he going to redo the house? Is that his purpose? Or is he looking for the land? And he's going to let it become a dump, just like the place on um, that we just lost. Misco. On Misco. I get the impression that this gentleman might be in over his head. Because I don't see, I just based on what little bit we've seen i think he's a wannabe like house flipper who doesn't really know what he's doing uh, so I, think, I think ultimately this house is going to be unsalvageable and that's the only risk in calling tim is if tim goes in there he could condemn it if it's mm -hmm. really that bad that's true but the other thing is I'm, i mean i don't mind talking to kathy because those people who went into the house on blackstone street and um, everybody thought that house ought to be torn down, um, 13 Blackstone. And these people have done a, a wonderful job uh, doing that house over. So, um, and they saved it. So there are people who do that. And yeah. I keep thinking about, um, you know, Mount Vernon and the fact that that was going to be torn down too because it was in such rough shape. So, you know, Might be nice to try to salvage it, and I certainly don't mind talking to the historical commission about it. I, do you really feel like if we said something to Tim, it's how how could we possibly be worse off? I mean, if the windows remain open, the whole house is just going to be condemned condemned regardless. Well, I don't know. I how think bad it, is how bad is it inside? I mean, is it really that bad? Because you, I, I remember I know, even how old is it? I don't even know how old it is. Oh, I don't know. It was I built in the late 1800s. I want to say um, 1880, 1890, maybe. I know it's older than my house. And my built, mine was built in 1905. I mean, because you'd hate to see another building fall because of neglect, because we're losing so many of them. I mean, we could. I just that was Tim who told us that in the historic commission that he's happy to help. He'll do whatever, but sometimes calling him right away is once he gets involved, it's kind of yeah. like it's a done deal. I just, I mean, I, I don't know. I know, I think the commission is reluctant to do too much here. They're trying to really stay within their lane. I don't think the town intends on doing anything. I spoke to Jen. I think they would be open to selling him that parcel. There's like, oh, we'd have to auction it off, the little strip. But again, 
I think unless us or Historic facilitate that discussion, it'll go nowhere because everybody's way too busy to follow up on it. Well, could we just write him a letter and say that he has to um, secure the house because it's a liability? I mean, that's sort of a no brainer. I think it's worth doing. I, I think it's worth reaching out. I don't know if anybody, I thought Kathy had tried to talk to him. I don't think anybody's really talked to this guy. All I know is Tim stopped him from doing work on a property on Millville Road. Where had, was that? I'll look it up. Um, I just texted his name in the chat. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> I have this thing. It comes back to a granite shop in Watertown, that address. Oh, it does? Yeah. Oh, he wants to own a granite yeah. company. <laughs> Hang on, I'll find what's his first name. Why won't this come up now? Yeah, I don't know how to pronounce it. I'm not even gonna try. Um, no, spelled it wrong. J O A O. Netto, hundred and six Millville. It's another old dump. Is that the one on the corner of Pleasant Street? I think. Uh, no, that's one wow. eleven on the corner okay. of Pleasant Millville. It's another, actually, it's another brown. Uh, Wood. I'll be on the other side, actually, on my side. Wood. Yep. Hmm. 111 just went under contract, too. Oh, I know the house. I know the house you're talking about. That, unfortunately, should be condemned. <laughs> <laughs> that really is in bad shape. Oh, my gosh. It's going to fall off the cliff. Yeah. What, 111? No, 106. 106? Hmm. 106. Right, well, if everybody... It's right next yeah. to the barn. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I know. I've driven by that. I will. Uh, I'll send a letter out to this gentleman to the address that we have in Watertown uh, from the Historic District Commission, just introducing ourselves, let him know we exist, uh, and find out what his uh, what he's going to do with that building. And that you know, it is in the historic district, so can you ask just to go tear it down without at least somebody can looking at it first. Can you ask him to secure it? Close the windows. What was that, Janice? Can can he ask him to secure it? To secure the building, yeah, because it's just yeah. going to get worse yeah. without somebody actually evaluating it. Yeah. Okay, I'll address that. I'll uh, I'll send a copy out to everyone so you know what I did, and mm -hmm. um, we'll go from there with it and see if we can apply back to it. I think. Can you CC the historic commission on the letter too, yeah. just from a formality standpoint? You got it. And then. Yeah, I don't, I don't know if anybody's really asked him what his intentions are, so I think that's good, a good idea. The way he cleared the property, it would make me think he's going after just the property and he, he's hoping to get rid of that house. Or he's going to put it back on the market and he's just going to try and sell right. it and cut his losses. Um, I, I can't see anybody going in and trying to rebuild that house. I mean, it, it's been gutted once. The only thing I know that's left in there is maybe the, the woodworking is fantastic in there, uh, but it hasn't been uh, taken care of in so many years, even when Maddie was still alive. But he never put in for a demo permit or anything, so that's nothing. We know of. Does anybody, do you know, was it sold as, I seem to remember the listing saying it had a failed septic. I, I want to say yes. I can pull it up in three seconds. Hold on. So... Um, that was a couple of years ago. All right. Oh, that was a while ago. And they, well, they had to do a new septic system to my house. They did a new septic system to Keith Usher's apartment building. So this is the only thing left besides so, the uh, They said that the Title V was the buyer's responsibility. When we typically see that, you assume that the, the septic has or will fail. Um, it was sold as is. I mean, cash offers only, which means it was like in really rough shape. That means no bank would be willing to lend. Wow. Yeah. So, and they sold it. I mean... Yeah, poor guy. So I mean, he spent one hundred fifty-five thousand on it in cash. So I'm he's either going to try and knock it down, or he's just going to try and sell it as is again. 
I don't imagine anything else will come of it. All right, well, let me start with the letter and um, we'll see what happens from there. Okay. All right. Main Street's popular this week. Uh, 33 Main Street. <laughs> start again on that. Yeah. So this and this one was a little bit my fault. It turns out, let me look it up again. I didn't read the whole thing clearly. It's a, so this is that behind the old town cemetery. It's Shelly Vincent. There's like an old barn. It's kind of long, it's bluish. Mm -hmm. And the roof is beyond done. So apparently Gail put this in as repairs to roof, but Gail entered it because it was a, it was a paper application. When you look at the actual application, it says replace 20 foot rafter, replace 20 rafter tails, replace fascia and soffit approximately 24 feet. So had I bothered to dig into this, I would have realized that it's the barn and not the roof. So I, we have to have a chat with, I don't know, we just need to follow up on some of these. But anyway, um, I called Dan Gardner. He was the contractor. Dan basically said the work had already been done. They put the permanent after the fact. Again, the thing was like on the verge of collapsing. He said it's in horrible condition. He thinks it's going to cost a fortune to repair. I tried to call Shelly. I had about a 30 second conversation. He said it was going to cost him like $20,000 and then he hung up on me and he was pissed. Uh -huh. So I don't think he's very interested in being told what to do, even though again, I don't think if you're just replacing the roof, we have that big of an involvement. And from what I'm reading, if you are replacing it with the same materials, you basically can just get like an exemption. It's in the bylaws. Um, yeah. So I guess it, at this point, it is what it is. I don't know if he's going to attempt to do something further. I mentioned to Kathy if there was any grant money available or any ideas, but mm. I don't know. I'm not sure Shelly needs grant money, actually, <laughs> if you want to know the truth. <laughs> I'm pretty you know. sure he doesn't. <laughs> SD is quite well off. Yeah. How visible is that from the road? Um, yeah, where is Not too. I mean, it's more not. from the cemetery. Right. I mean, you really got to go looking for it to, to pay attention to it. Is that the barn? Where is that? It's on the corner of Blackstone and Maine, right next to the cemetery. Oh, okay. So when that was like, okay. When you're in the cemetery in the back, you can to see the, right. the barn. Yeah. Okay. Um, it's on the same side of the, as of the street as the cemetery. So yeah. yeah so down. Yeah. Like past. It's in the back. Like. Huh. I don't even know. Uh oh. Okay. Yeah. Google it, Images. It, it, easily, you can see it. You can see it very easily from Blackstone Street. However. Right. So, yeah. I mean, it yeah. Is you, yeah. Oh. Okay. I'd have to look. And it, it's a oh, this top. Yes. 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 Here, so I can show you. <laughs> Although I don't know if you can um, should be able to snap. I'm taking a screenshot. <laughs> <laughs> I can all of this, uh, you know, well, her house is beautiful. So I mean, I don't know why that they're saying that that's not. So they're saying it would cost a ton of money to get it up to par and that it's I thought what he said was like eleven or twelve thousand dollars, and he doesn't want to pay it, and he doesn't want to be told what to do, and oh boy. I don't need people telling me what to do. I uh, like whatever. Mm. I don't know how to attach a picture. I just know how to do the chat. I'm not completely internet savvy. Yeah. Sorry. This won't be super helpful to most of you, but I think I can screen share. Hang on. I took a screenshot. I just don't. It's. Let's see. How do I do this? Yeah, uh, we're all just learning. Share. It's oh, this. Cool. oh, you're screen sharing. Oh, yeah, that's mm -hmm. smart. Yeah, 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 that makes sense. Uh, so it's barn in the back. Yeah. yeah. Which you can actually see pretty clearly from the cemetery. And I think Kathy, th that, that is a historic barn. It was may have been part of the cemetery at some point, or who, we don't really know. Mm -hmm. um, but I know Dan Garner said it's bad. Like, he wouldn't even go up on the roof bad. So structurally, it just needs like 20 grand worth of work and she's not willing to pay it. 
correct? He. he. <laughs> oh, he. Yeah, he. Really? he. Uh, yeah. I wouldn't have known. At this point, the person in the big house across the street. Oh. Yeah, the house on the corner of uh, yeah. Dodge Street. That's, yeah. Uh, that's his house. Oh, and this is his house as well? Yes. Oh, okay. I'm not sure there's any action for us at this point. It was more of a, this is coming down the road. I mean, this mm -hmm. permit was apparently applied for after the fact. They just went up and patched a few things real quick. So, but at some point- well, it comes up again, we'll be ready for it. Right. And it's now set up. So when they pull this permit, they will get told right up front that it's in the district. They need to apply. Mm -hmm. Okay. There's no surprises. Yeah. All right. Anybody have anything else on 33 Main Street? All right, let's move on to 15 Hastings Street. Okay. And, uh, the roof is leaking in two <laughs> places, one on the lawn porch on the east side. Um, we had a repair done to it, um, and we did get a suggestion to put a tarp on it for a year because we basically, uh, the money we have is really more for operating expenses for heat and insurance, et cetera. Um, and of course, fundraising hasn't gone very well for any organization lately. So um, anyway, um, we did have a CD that we, um, that came, you know, came, um, that matured and we could use that. But um, I think that um, we'd just be replacing the roof. We got three bids for it. Um, and um, that's really, that's about it. We're, we're doing kind. The, the problem is there are so many, um, there are so many angles to that roof. There's been so many additions that uh, just putting a, um, a tarp on for a while wouldn't, wouldn't really work. No. Um, and we were hoping, um, we didn't know whether this is, this is something that could happen, but I do know that the CPC put aside $10,000 for people that are in the district to do things on their houses. Um, and we were wondering if perhaps some of that CPC money could be given to the Historical Society to help pay for the roof. Um, I think the, um, the district commission is the one that has to recommend it to the CPC. Um, and I'm not sure that they would agree to it, but at any rate, I don't know how people feel. Obviously, Ruth and I um, can't vote on it. Um, we might have a little bit of a problem on this one. Jane should definitely abstain from any vote. Well, Ruth, too. Are you on the board, though, or just a member? She's a member. Because I think I'm a member, Mark's a member. There's something called the rule of necessity that we might have to invoke in order to allow some of us to vote. But I think you should abstain from voting because you oh, are. Oh, I would. <laughs> Absolutely. But this one we might just have to cover the logistics on. Well, I don't know how people feel about that either. If, you know, well, just the application for the work alone. Oh, yeah. oh, I see. Technically, that's a potential conflict of interest that we need to just make sure we... Oh, I, I see. I think it's a big deal. But we you're not talking about the money here. You're talking yeah. about apl applying for the, um, the work. Okay. Regarding the money, I don't know where we left it. I think we have to do some research as to what actually is allowed for expenditures of CPA funds. It may or may not be possible to allow that money to flow into private hands. Well, that it was set aside for that reason, actually. Yeah, but I think we set it aside with the understanding that we had to come up with rules, and we, it was kind of a good faith effort to try and get the district to pass a town meeting. <laughs> but I think I see. Really, we need to talk to the CPA coalition and find out what really can and can't be done. Well, I know that, um, trying to think, Holliston did that. Um, they access CPA funding for a roof that they had done. Um, but Kathy knows more about that because she did some investigation about it. Yeah, I'm gonna look them up. But I think the, the CPA was looking for this commission to have our district guidelines and everything set up and come up with a potential means of allowing that money to be released. In this case, this is the, nonprofit museum building as opposed to somebody's private house. So I think right. the way that's better.
but there also was a big lawsuit in Acton over a church with windows. Oh. So I okay. you know, just got to be careful what we do. Well, we did apply for, um, actually, we didn't apply for the grant. You had to write a letter to get permission to apply for a grant. And um, we were not chosen to fill out an application. So that was that. So, but it needs to, you know, it needs to be done. You know, when, when a roof is leaking, that's the demise of a building, so. Plus you have all those important things within the building that you can't lose. <laughs> uh, that's true. Mold, you're gonna have an issue with mold if you have leaking and you don't want that. Yeah. Yeah. Can I recommend that when we start doing the research on this, um, and then what I'm thinking is somebody from the Historic Society, not someone on this board, uh, send a letter to this commission to get the ball rolling. Okay, well, I'll have Amy DeWitt as the VP and I can have her do okay. that. Yeah, well, let's get something in writing to get the ball rolling. Let us do the research, see if we can even do anything with this. And then if we can, we'll forward it on to uh, the CPC. Yeah, well, we don't, we don't want to wait too long. We certainly don't want to yeah. wait until no, next week. We're going to have to get right on this. Um, and do I know, you know that how much, Jane, do we know how much we're looking at? Yes, we had three bids. Um, one, well, two were around 15,000, 14,000. And the other one was nine, plus we added another thousand in case they came across something that was unexpected. Okay. So one was Copeland and I forget who the other two were. Uh, the first one really didn't put any, um, didn't include any of the specifications of what, what, um, materials were going to be used or how they, how they were going to do it. Um, and the second one was similar. Oh, it was Cook. It was Cook. And it was similar to Copeland, but Copeland was less expensive. So. You, Can did, I? Say there was you did say there was plywood down there, right? I have no idea what's under there. I assume there's plywood, but don't, I don't. Don't, 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 don't assume. <laughs> <laughs> I, I really don't know what is there. I really because, don't. Because if there's no plywood, you could, that's, that could be significantly more. Yeah, right. not even sheathing for the whole building. Can I suggest, I just follow, email you and Amy, I found the project in Halston. I think the Historic Society should submit an application to the Community Preservation Funding just directly for historic funds for this project. Okay. Especially if you ask them for half of it. I right. Think that's far more palatable to say we'll split it 50-50. It's a public building. It's preserved. It's open. You know, that might be the, the way to do it. And then at least get it on their radar so they can talk about it. Okay. Um, well, I know that the thing is I don't think that it wouldn't be, we couldn't access it until November, Dan, and we do not want to wait until the winter to start replacing this roof because that would be a disaster. We already went through one winter well, uh, thinking that it had been repaired and then it started leaking again, so. I don't know if the CPA funds can be used in a reimbursement manner ever. That no. We need to check into. So I mean, we, we had a situation like that where we paid for something, um, yeah, because, and they did reimburse us, but they weren't happy about it. So that that really is not something that 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 they like to do or can do, really. Yeah, I don't. That's there. There. So there's something called the anti-aid amendment. It may not be legal for the town to write a check to the historical society at all. They may only be able to pay the roofer directly. Right. And even that may not be allowed, although it seems to, they did it in Austin, so. Well, the thing is, we're, um, we're, we're having that situation with the archival um, boxes and, and things to store the, the documents oh. in. And, you know, we, no company is going to say, okay, we're going to give you all this stuff and, you know, then oh. you can pay us later. I'll follow up with you after the meeting. I thought, okay. Jen, you have a credit card. Right. That we can handle that. Okay. Anyway. But I, um, 
did we vote on the 10,000 for this? Or did CPA just recommend it? Did it go? No, no, no. That was going to the town meeting. Town meeting. For the district? Yes. What did yeah. we actually vote? I don't remember. I'll see if I can find it. I think it was to make it more palatable to the people within the district so that they would um, you know, it. <laughs> support it. <laughs> would it also be a good idea to have the society put in their application for the local district review process? Okay, we do have to do that. I can yeah. send you the link. It's all in viewpoint now. At least get that in so that okay. the paperwork is done. It can't hurt to at least get you know, the letter to us and even the letter to the CPC, even if they can't do it. Let's get the ball right. on that. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, Mark. Yes. Before we get off of this, all the properties, I do have one more that I don't think made it to the agenda. Okay. I've been told there's a rumor that the owner of the post office building is going to um, need to recite it at some point. And he's wondering how to, it's Tim Icardi. He's wondering what's available to him. I think he's really trying to see if he can put some sort of a, a non wood siding up. So mm -hmm. I, that's going to be a potential fight. He was asking if the side of the building is visible from the public way, which I think it is. It is. I, I would say so. <laughs> if you're headed south on Maple Street, it is. Yeah, I, it just, I think that's going to be a discussion that's going to come up and I don't know if, you know, I don't know what's out there. Maybe there's some alternative, you know, rep well, like Hardy board, like Hardy board, you can paint it and it looks like cedar. It's better than vinyl siding. Is mm. that something, I guess that the district would entertain. I don't know. We'd have to... What do you say? I'm looking at our thing. Again, nothing formal. I just, he asked me about it, so I'm making you aware that that's going to come down the road. Okay. Um, well, we'll keep it in mind. Yeah. And um, I feel like it's such an important building. You just. You can't just throw something up. Exactly. Yeah, our, our thing says it's preferred that original siding and trim be retained whenever possible. Deteriorated materials replaced, repaired or replaced with new material that closely as possible duplicates the original. Um, consider preserving existing trim if possible, replacing it in kind. I mean, I don't, if that's what we're going to hold everybody to, we can't give them an exemption. No. I just, I have a feeling it's going to be an interesting discussion when it comes up. <laughs> Well, hopefully he'll do it after July 1st. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We'll keep that on the radar. All right. Next thing on the agenda is the design modification documents. Seems like that never goes away. <laughs> How, are, are we, we done? <laughs> are we done with it? I'm going over everything I can with it. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I had looked at some. I had looked at some other ones, and one that I thought that was really interesting was Newton's, um, Newton, Massachusetts, and they have um, it's called the Newton Listing Preservation Design Guidelines, and it's it's fascinating because it really gives you a lot of information on maintenance and and just technical stuff about having an old house. But then it tells you what they encourage you to do, and then they tell you what they discourage you from doing. So it's not like th those other guidelines where it says you have to, you know, get the exact color of the mortar and stuff like that. It's, um, yeah. It seems like it's more of a general thing. And it, um, as a homeowner of a whole house, I think, or in the district, that it would be something that wouldn't be quite as um, scary. Anyway, I thought it was very interesting to look at. All right. Anybody else uh, have anything to comment on? 
Oh, I agree. I think that the ones, the one from Grafton, which is one of the ones that we looked at was a little too um, difficult for people. So you guys want to scrap it and start over? Is that what? No, no. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think it could be modified. You know. I mean, what, I mean, I feel like, you know, everything within this is pretty much wherever possible and if possible, right? So you just have to make a case if you can't. Or if those, it's impossible to replicate the material. I don't think anybody. I see. Uh, it, it's up to you guys. They just went really in depth with like, there's photographs of like, you know, good, bad repair methods. This is like a very in depth document, Newton. Mm. But I don't know if there's stuff we want to, you know, if there's anything we want to pull out of here. I mean, I think. But at the at the end of it, where they give you the you know like the um, educational part, they say what they encourage you to do, and then what they discourage you to do. So it was it was a a gentler tone, I thought. Where? And it gave you some edge. Um, I don't. Well, it was in there somewhere. Dan, do you have it up? Do you want to text the link to it? Yeah, hang on. Um, it was or, you know, ma dot gov, mm -hmm. and then you could click on it. There's a whole bunch of different yep, I got it. links. My recommendation would be to move this forward in draft form so that we can get something on the table. If we have to go to a public hearing. I don't really know how we do that, <laughs> considering what we're going through right now. Um, just to get it up there, and then we can tweak it as we go along. Oh, yeah. We can sit on this forever, and we're still not going to have anything that somebody can exactly right i mean um, that would be my recommendation is to put it in draft form the way it is and then go through it and tweak it as we feel fit to do so the only concern i have is i guess we can kind of float along but technically if we don't do a hearing and follow the process we could be open to a challenge sure. whether someone really knows enough to do that is you know may or may or may not be seen but I think, I mean, I don't know how things will change. We may, I guess my, my point, and maybe it's a later item, is I think we might consider setting up the public hearing and doing it all over Zoom and getting it over with. Yeah, and whoever chimes in, chimes in. Yeah, I mean, at I, least we've done the due diligence. I think the biggest thing we need to do is send a letter to every house within the district and basically here's the guidelines, here's the application, this is a thing now. Because I think a lot of them have forgotten all about it. And then they get shocked every time they put in a permit and suddenly everything gets held up and um yeah. only i'm only thinking money wise here can we just send them a letter with a link to the town's website with all this information i would Not sending all that paperwork out what i've done with water i would yeah i would put a letter with a link and then you put in the letter if you really want us to mail you a copy let us know and we'll we'll onesie twosie and i've never had a single person ask me to mail them a printed copy of our regulations okay but it, you know it just says we'll do it if you want it we could have them oh, if i mean, guess we can't now but theoretically you could have them available for pickup we do have money in the budget starting july 1 the postage money we asked for that all went i forget what they what do we do now if it's just one line for historic or shared but I think our request got approved. So I don't know if we want to wait till July 1 when we have the money because we technically don't have money for postage right now. Do we have money to do the public hearing, sending it out to the newspaper and everything that has to be done there? We'd have to beg Kim for the money and they have the money, but we'd have to basically say, we need you to pay this out of the town hall line. Um, I don't know if I have a draft budget. I'll have to try and find it. How much is it for a public hearing? Oh, I want to say it was a hundred or two hundred bucks. Oh my god! <laughs> it's, the, it's the newspaper part. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. That's what we're paying for. Gotcha. Well, let me ask everybody this: Are we comfortable holding this off until the new fiscal year to do a public hearing on this? And that'll give us another month to do a little more review 
and that when we do get to tweak some of this, we'll have more information. I'd be okay. Just ask him for the money. And then maybe what I'd really like to do is post these, everything. I, I think I put our application, but post all this as a draft form and put a thing on the website that says this is our process. We're waiting because of COVID. But I think the more we can at least get something out, I don't know. I mean, I guess we could probably skate by till July 1st without a letter to homeowners. I haven't gotten another permit now, so. No, you know, people have put a lot of work into this, so I really want to see it out there. Yeah. Mm. Uh, I'm open for suggestions. <laughs> I mean, if we wanted to do a hearing, we got to put it in the paper for two weeks. So at a minimum, you're talking June 16th, 20th, like the last weeks of June. So I guess what's the harm of waiting two more weeks after that? We're so close already. And then we'll have the money in the budget set the public hearing for, you know, July, early July. I was going to say a lot of people are gone in July. I know. <laughs> um, but not, this year. <laughs> not this year. <laughs> yeah. I don't think everybody's going anywhere too far. Yeah. <laughs> uh, anybody else have thoughts? Either we try to push this through now and try to get the money from the town or we'll wait until we have money in our own budget after July 1st. I would think that we would push it through now and try to get the money from the town hall. Actually, historic. We got that extra 500 bucks that we're, we're never gonna spend all of it. Right. So as long as the commission is okay, again, I don't anticipate us having 10 more demolition hearings in the next month. Are you on the commission, Dan? You are, right? Yeah. So just maybe just find out, see if that would meeting date is I'm let me look June actually next Monday is what my notes say let's see if they're willing to so we could ask them if they're willing to cover the cost I mean it would be I think it's the newspaper advertising and we need to send a letter to every property which I have a list somewhere um, what do you think it, the cost would be Lynn with the, the list So what do you think the cost would be with the mailing and the um, public hearing notification with the newspaper? I wish I, I want to say 200 bucks for the newspaper. Um, Probably be at least 200 for me. Yeah, I thought I'm, I remember doing it for the only cook shop and I think it was more than that. I thought it was about 300, but we did it in two publications as well. So. Yeah, I have a bulk mailing. I have 96 properties within the district, if this is correct. So 96 times uh, 55 cents is 52, 53 bucks plus print them on the town hall copier. So that's free. We got to buy a box of envelopes. That's uh, are you going to say, are you going to send it certified? No. Well, yeah. you know, are we required to? Let me You're read. not required to, but I think it protects you to send it certified. Because that would be expensive. That would be 560 bucks. I feel like if people see an envelope from the town of Menden, they're going to open it. Let me okay. just see if we're required to. <laughs> Maybe that's just me. <laughs> <laughs> There's our rules. Criteria, enforcement, no. The commission, after a public hearing, duly posted, advertised 14 days in advance, blah, 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 may adopt. We don't even have to notify all the people in the district. We just have to post, duly posted, advertised at least 14 days in advance in a conspicuous place in town hall in a newspaper of general circulation. So we're going above and beyond by even sending them a letter. So maybe we don't. I think we should, I mean, I, I think it's worth the 50 bucks to mail a letter to every property just to, because like, well, like Steve's had no clue. 
and I'm sure there's more. Well, that wouldn't hurt just to introduce ourselves to everybody again, um, and then we can put in there that, you know, the public hearing is then. There's like this introduction that we already wrote for just pull out this one page, the introduction, the application form that has the process, and then the hearing notice. It'd be like three pages. We'd be looking at 50 bucks in postage plus the cost of the envelopes. So assuming, assuming Historic um, donate some of their reserves, then it's fine. I think I'll, I'll bring it to the commission. Considering mm -hmm. that money rolls over to free cash, I don't see what harm there is in spending it. Okay. We're talking a grand total of probably 300 bucks. Mm-hmm. Um, and then we could set it. We'd have to, maybe if we want to wait and meet again, or I don't know if we want to set a date now, or we don't know how things are going to go. We, I mean, we can open up a meeting real quick for that one item. Mm -hmm. you know, after your meeting, we'll set something for next week. And uh, we can set the meeting date then. If we get the, okay, if we don't get the money, then we can't do it until after July 1st anyway, so. Right. How's everybody feel about that? I'm fine with that. So Dan, you want something official or are you just gonna bring it up to the I'm just I'm just gonna email Lynn and the commission right now and ask them to put it on the agenda. So you guys meet Monday. We meet Monday. So we could set a date now. Right. I I don't know if we can meet earlier. I'm booked Tuesday and Wednesday night and Thursday night. <laughs> we're all we're all free, Dan, but <laughs> so, the, so Tuesday the selectmen are at 6 30. I can meet before then. Wednesday that it's whenever Board of Health meets. Thursday is parks and water, I think. Oh my gosh. Um and I think this week's the that board of selectmen meeting could be a doozy. So yeah, I have uh -oh. a meeting already scheduled for next Wednesday. The Board of Health has been moving their meetings to, well, moved their meeting to Thursday this week. I don't know if they're moving it to Thursday next week as well, but I'm already committed on Wednesday, so. What if, what time is your meeting on, on Tuesday? Because this is just a quick, yeah. a quick, quick meeting. Could, so what if? Five or 5.30. Uh, yeah, I don't get out of the zoo until 5.30, quarter of six. Uh, okay. And then Wednesday, you're busy, Mark. Um, yeah, I can. I can do. I tried to some earlier than seven, but if I don't get out of the zoo, then I'm not going to be here. So. What about doing Monday right at seven and doing a quick joint town meeting, joint meeting with Historic, and then sign off and let them have their meeting at six fifteen? Oh, that's. Right. I can do that. I'm pretty sure they don't. I don't think they're particularly picky. I mean, what time? Wanna, what time, Dan? It would be at seven. Although I don't know if we could. Although if we have to have a big discussion too, we don't want to take up all their time, so that might not be great. <laughs> um, what's Thursday like for you guys? The fourth. I'm most likely going to have parks in the afternoon and water at night, or board of health at night. But everything's up in the air. Um, what was the idea for Monday for so would that's not gonna work I think we'd have to t discuss when they're trying to have their meeting right so I don't know I mean if you want to wait and see what happens with Board of Health if there's no Board of Health meeting on Wednesday then I'm totally free unless Mark has a commitment at night yes I do on Wednesday yeah okay um, well Thursday maybe oh you're busy Thursday this is so funny we're also <laughs> um friday who who ha who's going out on friday probably no one so <laughs> <laughs> i have friday night available right now <laughs> the other thing and i can i haven't found out we don't necessarily need to have a meeting for the water commission so i can shoot them a message and see if they even want to meet what and is this be back to thursday night that would be my thursday night conflict the only thing it's just parks we have to meet to talk about field use but we can't do that till the state tells us what we're allowed to do and when what would time would that meeting be that would probably be seven o'clock then so what I... if we just did a 6 p.m on thursday 
And then, you know, honestly, I don't know why it would be any more than a five minute Zoom. It shouldn't be because we're all in agreement what we want to do. We yeah. just going to set a date, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then we'll know if we have the money. If How about 6.15, just sort of give me time to get home. Oh, oh that's right, sorry. <laughs> Does 6.30 work? Because if Parks meets, they'll meet early. Yeah. And then I can meet around the way we can meet around them. So I'm going to post it for Thursday. Mm -hmm. And that's what, June 4th? Okay. Yeah. And you June 4th at 6.30? Everything the same from the agenda. The header, the link, I mean. Same phone number, same ID. Oh, same. Okay, I got you. I'll just change right. So for everybody, that's Thursday, June 4th at 6.30. 6.30, okay. And I will send out the agenda reminder once we get it posted. Do we want to try and set the hearing date now, or do we want to wait? I mean, I don't know. It's well, if we, have to, we have to go out two weeks with the advertisements, right? Yeah, and I don't do them enough to know the mechanism if we could, if that would, if the fourth would give us enough time. I mean, and plus, stuffing and processing and putting letters in the mail i don't know if we want to try and set it the week of the 29th is that i mean the town meeting's already the 29th i don't know what you all think i mean theoretically two weeks we could do it the week of the the um 22nd i think um how about if we, let's go out as far as we can to keep it in June. That would be the 30th. How does that work for everybody? June 30th? 30th. That's probably good because selectmen won't meet because they were at the town meeting the night before. Right. So Tuesday the 30th. Um, and Dan, I'm going to need some guidance with this because I haven't done one before, so... If you want, I'll send you, I have, somewhere I have a template we use for water. Okay, perfect. Change the name on it and send it. And again, I think we can use the same Zoom link and the same whatever. All right, um, so is the 30th okay for everyone else? Yes. Okay, great. Time. Thank you. Uh, let's do that one at seven. That's okay. That's good yep. for me. Now, does that, do we have to publish the draft that night with the meeting posting? I would probably. Because I know you have to have all documents that are going to be discussed on the agenda available to everybody who might attend the meeting. Yeah, I would have the final draft that we're going to, at least the working draft that we're going to discuss. Okay. I would have a copy of it to Ellen so she can link it up. Yep. And we'll put it on the website, and then that'll give people time to comment on it. Um, and we then can do that. draft a letter. I mean, I can, I, if you want, I'll copy this out of our guidelines and send it to you all, and then you can discuss it on the fourth. Okay. Okay. Sir. Right. Good. Anything else before we move on? Uh, the, the last thing that we have on the agenda was to discuss the emergency work provisions and the bylaws. I don't know how we get around something like that. If it's an emergency, it's an emergency. We're going to get overridden anyway by the building department, most likely. Well, so I don't know. There's a process for the demo permits where they're supposed to make the effort to notify us. I'm thinking that person might want to be Mark. I'm, I'm, I mean, my kind of thought is I wonder, maybe not right away, we might want to invite Tim to one of our meetings and talk and just talk it through. Because, you know, I, I mean, personally, like, I don't want to hold people up and screw people over. But at the same time, sitting on a permit for two weeks, if it was an emergency, they should have called Tim and put a sticker right on the thing and said, this is a critical. We need this done yesterday. Not when they suddenly got told they were in a district. All of a sudden, now it's an emergency. So I, I just think it'd be more upfront about it would be helpful. You know, I don't know. I mean, we should definitely invite Tim to this hearing. 
Okay. Uh, I think he does have some really good feedback, with, you know, which would be good to have. Do we know exactly what the bylaw says? Yeah, hang on. <laughs> I'm gonna find it. I have it right here, hold on. It's section nine something. It, okay. Paste in the thing there, I can. Here, I got it. Section nine. My God, it's so tiny. Nothing in this bylaw shall be construed to prevent the ordinary maintenance, repair, or replacement of any exterior architectural feature within the district, which does not involve a change in design, material, color, or the outward appearance thereof, nor to present landscaping, um, nor construed to prevent the meeting of requirements certified by a duly authorized public officer to be necessary for public safety because of an unsafe or dangerous condition, nor construed to prevent any construction alteration under a permit issued before the bylaw was created. I know with demo, Tim has some, I mean, Tim has some power. If a building is condemned, if it's a safety hazard, that kind of thing. I'm just thinking there should be a, a process where that goes to Tim. Tim picks up the phone and says, hey, Mark, just letting you know this happened. So you're aware of it. You know, instead of Gail giving out my cell number to a very angry person and me having to, you know, <laughs> I did tell her to use the district number, but this is Tim's job. God. <laughs> oh. He wasn't mad at me, but Ted Steves was not happy. Put it that way. So we, were, we weren't even holding it up. The lad that church, seven main. Uh, that the camera end. was being held up by the Board of Health, wasn't it? Yeah, well, there were some communication problems, and his apparently the roofer told him he had the permit, and then the town wouldn't give it to him, and blah, 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 and he doesn't understand, and they're changing the roof, and this is crap. It just, it was a communication problem more than anything. Okay. Because, I mean, I think we acted on it in a reasonable amount of time when we found out about it. They'd already started the work. Yeah. <laughs> All right, well, I'll make sure that Tim gets invited to at least a hearing meeting and maybe another meeting after that. All right, so we already know our future meeting dates. Is there anything else that anybody wants to bring up during the meeting? The only thing I would mention, and I think I emailed it, I set up our application form is in viewpoint, all the certificates. So everything should be fairly automated now. If we get any new things, it's linked on the website. We'll just have to make sure we update it when we, if we change anything. Um, but hopefully we should get this stuff electronically. Oh, you emailed that? I'm sorry, I totally. When did you email it? I don't know. What did I email? I might have only sent it to Mark. I don't remember. Oh, okay. Yeah, I don't see anything. If you go to the, if you go to the website, okay. the Historic District Committee, right at the top, there's a link for the form. It goes right to the application form. That's fine. We've also got the demo permit online. Mm -hmm. um, at some point, we could create what's called project. So I did it for demo. So you apply for both permits simultaneously. Um, I mean, here I can show you actually, if you want what happens now Hello. to a, um, a project. Sure. Let's, Are you going to screen share? Let's see if I can do it. Hang on. Let me pull this out. This makes me a little. There you go. So now if you go to apply for a residential building permit. Yep. Oh. <laughs> You got to register. <laughs> <laughs> Let me log in under my fake account here. Yeah, how many days do we have to notify Ellen if we're going to post the meeting? Is it, is it 48 hours? 48 hours. My only thought was if the, for some reason 
you guys don't approve the money, there's no sense in having a meeting. Right. As long as I have 48 hours, that gives me plenty of time to do it. I can do it Monday night if it gets approved. I've never actually gone through this. I should have done this on the internal section. Oh, boy. I don't think it's a, oh, it's a requirement. It totally is. I'm just going to fake things in here. So as soon as you click, um, do you have frontage on these streets, any of these streets, Elm, Hastings, Maine, or Maine? Oh. Look at that. I like that. Bring up. Hopefully. A whole new section. Yeah, so this is what comes up. And they have to check a little box that basically says you're in the district, you got to apply, blah, 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 blah. That's awesome. So hopefully that helps. Um, because I think part of it was they put the permit in, they get all done, and then a week later they get a message saying, oh, you're in the district, you have all these other things you got to do. Huh. So, well, that's great. Hopefully that'll get Very us good. in a better direction. Has the Historic Commission gotten any feedback uh, for anybody else looking to become a uh, district? We Oh, geez. We talked at the last meeting there was discussion about a house on Washington Street. But now I think Patrice Murphy is working with them and Medicon at Land Trust to try and find a different way. They're trying to preserve this house and farm and stop it from being subdivided and developed. Which think, one? Congdon's. It must be Congdon's. Yeah. Yeah. Bye. But I don't know what I don't know what's happening with that, but the last I heard was Patrice was was talking to them. Then there was something on Hartford Ave, but I think that kind of wasn't, um, I don't think that went anywhere. I, I think the historic commission's position is they would rather leave that up to the district to deal with. And I think right now we're just trying to get our basic regulations done. Well, but, I think once we push out the design guidelines, there's no reason why we can't push to add another district, but I don't know. I mean, obviously it's not like it, an overnight thing, but. I mean, yeah, like up North Ave might be somewhere to think about when there's, there's actual historic homes up in that. And that's a, that's a federal district up there or a national register. Really? Okay. Well, national register though, doesn't. It's meaningless. That's houses. Hmm. Right. It's okay. just honorary really. Right. So that would be a good candidate for a future town district that has power. Um, talking anyway. about North Avenue? Yeah. Well, I think Washington Street, too. Some of the I was going to say, there's there. some nice, real nice old houses there, and oh. I feel like they kind of, they're parallel with one another, so it would probably right. make sense to do both if you're going to do, do it. Maybe. Anything else from anyone else? All right. Oh. oh. Thank you kindly for meeting tonight. Thank you for setting it up. Thank you. You're welcome. Thanks to Dan. Thank you. uh, do Dan and, and, and Deb do all the work. <laughs> thanks to Parks for paying for this. Yeah, thanks for Parks. <laughs> <laughs> well, they, they did teams finally, but. Yeah, you know, it's kind of strange. We set up teams and um, nobody even bothered putting the video on. <laughs> yeah, I yeah it was the Lonnie show. That was pretty funny. <laughs> while everybody was talking well if you need someone to stuff envelopes I can do it at the historical society if you want envelopes stuffed for the people in the, well, that, in the district that would be great because I, I did this for Anne I can print them all and then I could get you the envelopes the labels and the stamps and then somebody you guys could I, I, can, stuff I can help okay yeah. well we'll um We'll take it one step at a time. If we get the okay after the fourth, then we'll put you to work. Okay. <laughs> All right. Have a good night. Thank All you, right. everyone. Bye. Good Thank night. you, everyone. Bye. Stay healthy. We'll try. <laughs> <laughs> We're vulnerable, you know, at our age. <laughs>